In this video, we discuss special considerations for vulnerable tenants, including supporting tenants experiencing domestic and family violence. Ending domestic and family violence is a community responsibility. More people are seeking help for domestic and family violence issues as the COVID-19 pandemic places additional stress on households. Changes have been made to give tenants experiencing domestic and family violence more options to manage their tenancy arrangements and enact plans to end the violence. So what has changed? Tenants experiencing domestic and family violence can end their interest in a tenancy agreement by providing the property owner or manager seven days notice of their intention to leave supported by appropriate evidence. They can leave immediately after providing the notice and their liability for break lease costs will be capped at the equivalent of one week's rent. They can request their rental bond um, contribution to be refunded to them. They can change the locks to their rental property without consent and must provide copies of these keys or access codes to their rental property owner or manager as soon as practicable. Property owners can ask remaining co-tenants to top up the rental bond if a bond contribution is refunded to a tenant who ends their interest in a lease due to domestic and family violence. Property owners and managers have new obligations to prevent misuse or disclosure of information in a notice of intention to leave for domestic and family violence with penalties if they do not meet these conditions. So how can we end a tenancy quickly and safely to enact plans of domestic violence? A tenant experiencing domestic and family violence can end their interests in a tenancy agreement by giving the property owner or manager at least seven days notice of their intention to leave. The tenant could leave immediately and their liability for the rent would be limited to end this to the notice period. They would also not be responsible for loss rent, advertising, reletting fees, cost of disposing of abandoned goods. The tenancy would end after the required notice period of the tenant experiencing the domestic and family violence if they're a sole tenant. If they're a co-tenant, the tenancy continues. Tenants who provide a notice of intention to leave for domestic and family violence will need to substantiate that they are or have experienced domestic and family violence during the tenancy. Tenants do not need to disclose the actual details about the act of violence they have experienced. Tenants can substantiate that they have experienced this violence during the tenancy by allowing the property manager or owner access to one of the following a protection order or a temporary protection order, a police protection order, an interstate order or injunction for personal protection under the Family Law Act, a domestic and family violence notice of intention to leave form signed by an authorised professional certifying the information is true and correct to the best of their knowledge. An authorised professional could be a doctor, a social worker, refuge or crisis worker, a DFV worker or case manager, Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander medical ser service worker. A property owner or manager can make an urgent application to QCAT to review whether the DFV notice of intention to leave has been validly given. A property owner or manager receives the DFV notice of intention to leave from a tenant must inform the tenant if they intend to apply to QCAT uh, to have the notice set aside or if there are other tenants on the lease that the other tenants will be informed that the tenant is vacating the property and when and that the agreement continues for the other tenants remaining. Where more than one tenant is on the lease, property owners and managers are required to give the notice to any remaining tenants on the lease that the vacating tenant's interest in the lease has ended and the lease continues for the remaining tenants in place 
and those remaining tenants must top up the rental bond on a stated day that is not less than one month after the given of the notice period. The lease continues for the remaining tenants and they are required to meet all the obligations under the tenancy agreement. Where a bond is held for rental property and the vacating tenant's contribution has been refunded to them, the remaining tenants may be asked to top up the bond amount to restore the rental bond to the amount required under the general tenancy agreement. The property owner or manager is required to provide the remaining tenants with a notice outlining the state. Property owners and managers will incur a penalty if they do any of the following. Disclose information about the tenant's experience of domestic and family violence to another person except in accordance with the applicable laws. Or if they fail to securely store and handle any domestic and family violence information that is given to them. Property owners and managers cannot disclose forwarding addresses, information from the tenants who provided the DFE notice of intention to leave. Tenants that have provided a valid DFE notice of intention to leave can apply to the Residential Tenancy Association, the RTA, to have their rental bond contribution refunded. The RTA can refund the bond contribution with the property owner's agreement. Other bond con contributors, sorry, agreement would not be required. Those tenants that have provided a valid DFE notice of intention to leave will not be liable for property damage or rent arrears caused by the domestic and family violence they have experienced during the, co uh, sorry, during the tenancy. They are liable for any property damage or rent that they caused that are not due to acts of domestic or family violence against them. QCAT can determine the rights and liabilities of all tenants and the property owner if there is a dispute about refunding the vacating tenant's rental bond contribution, including uh, the condition of the property, the cause of the damage or arrears during the tenancy, connection to any of the acts of family and domestic violence experienced by the vacating tenant. What about changing of locks? A tenant experiencing domestic and family violence can change the locks in their rental property to ensure their personal safety. The tenant does not require the property owner or manager's prior consent. They must ensure the locks are changed by a qualified tradesperson or locksmith. It is a responsibility for all costs involved in ensuring the locks comply with the relevant body corporate bylaws. They must provide copies of the keys or access codes to the property owner or manager within seven days unless there isn't a reasonable excuse not to. Okay. A tenant cannot change locks to common property in community title schemes such as general entry or exit doors to apartment complexes. For rooming accommodation, the provider must change or repair the lock that secures entry to the resident's room if the resident believes it is necessary to protect that resident from domestic and family violence. Property owners and managers cannot give copies of keys or access codes for locks changed by the tenants to enact plans to end domestic violence to anyone unless the tenant agrees in writing to do so. If you need help or support for domestic and family violence issues, please contact the following. Emergency Services 000. DV Connect Women's Line is 1800 188 188. The Men's Helpline is 1800 600 836. Take care.